In this video, we're going to take a look at the exponential function and also what its inverse looks like. Uh, we'll dedicate the first uh, few pages to drawing the exponential function, and later on we'll get into what the inverse is. So first of all, we're going to graph uh, actually three different exponential functions, y equals 2 to the x, y equals 3 to the x, and y equals 4 to the x. And we're just going to use a table of values. We're going to take a few negatives from negative 3 to uh, negative 1, 0, and then uh, 1, 2, and 3 for x as well. Now, first of all, we're going to substitute negative 3 in place of x. So we would evaluate 2 to the power of negative 3. And remember what that looks like is this. So 2 raised to the power of negative 3. Remember the negative exponent means the reciprocal. So that's 1 over 2 cubed, which would be 1 over 8. So that first y value is 1 over 8. When you evaluate the next one, which would be 2 raised to the power of negative 2, then that would be 1 over 2 to the positive 2, or a quarter. And so the next one's a quarter. Two to the power of negative 1 would be 1 over 2 to the first, or 1 half. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Uh, anything to the power of 0 is 1, except you can't evaluate 0 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, and 2 raised to the power of 3 would be 8. Now these are all ordered pairs, so negative 3, 1, 8 means we go left 3 and up an 8, so that's pretty low, pretty close to the x-axis. Uh, negative 2, a quarter would be about right here, and then negative 1, half here. Then 0, 1 would be this point right here. Uh, 1, 2, 2, 4, and then 3, 8 would be up here. And so we draw a smooth curve between those, and that's what y equals 2 to the x looks like. Uh, for the next one, y equals 3 to the x, so we would first evaluate 3 raised to the power of negative 3, so that's 1 over 3 cubed, or 1 over 27. And then 3 to the negative 2 would be 1 over 3 squared, or 1 over 9. 3 to the negative 1 is a third, 3 to the 0 is 1, 3 raised to the power of 1 is 3, 3 raised to the power of 2 or 3 squared is 9, and 3 to the power of 3 is 27. And so we can plot those points, and we'll plot them all on the curve here. Now we can't actually plot 327 because 27 is off the top of the graph. So basically draw a smooth curve between them, and that's what y equals 3 to the x looks like. Now very similar, 4 to the power of negative 3 would look like this. So it would be 1 over 4 cubed, and 4 cubed is 64, so that's 1 over 64. So that first y value would be 1 over 64. And then we would have uh, 1 over 16. Uh, 4 to the negative 1 is a quarter, 1 over 4. 4 to the power of 0 is 1. 4 to the power of 1 is 4. 4 squared is 16. And 4 cubed would be 64. And of course, the uh, last couple are too high to graph, but we can graph the first several. Now, 164 is pretty difficult to graph, but we go left 3 and up 164. So we'll, we'll make it look like it's just barely above the x axis. So applying the other points, and of course uh, 0, 1 again would be here, just the same as the first two. Uh, 1, 4 would be right there. And then 2, 16, well 16 is just off the top of the graph. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 would be up there. And so we draw a smooth curve between them. And we'll label all the uh, curves and so that's what it looks like uh, for uh, uh, the basic shape of an exponential curve. Now a couple things I want to point out here. Uh, let's take a look at the 4 of the x. If we go from 1 64th to 1 over 16, to go from 1 64th to 1 over 16, you actually multiply that by 4, you get 1 16th. If you multiply 1 16th by 4, you get a quarter. And just to demonstrate that, If we have 1 over 16 
times 4. Now the 4 is the same as 4 over 1, so multiplying the numerators, 1 times 4 is 4. And 16 times 1 on the bottom in the denominator is 16. Now 4 sixteenths reduces to a quarter. So that's why I say if you take a sixteenth and multiply it by 4, you get a quarter. So that's what this says. You take a sixteenth, multiply it by 4, and you get a quarter. And that's the same all the way along here. Quarter times 4 would be 1. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 4 would be 16. 16 times 4 gives you 64. So notice for an exponential curve, as long as the x coordinates uh, are in order and going consecutively, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, etc., then the difference between the y values are in all in the same ratio. There's a common ratio or product between the successive function values. And so that's what that statement says. Now one last thing before we go on to the next page. If you have, uh, for any of these curves, you want to find the rate of change between two points. So for example, let's say between this point and this point. Remember you would just draw a secant. And to go from this point to this point, the average rate of change, uh, you would use uh, the change in y over change in x or rise over run from this point to this point has gone up four blocks and to the right one so the rise is four the run is one or change in y is four change in x is one so four over one of course would be four so the average rate of change for example from this point to this point on the two of the x function would be four so that's how you calculate an average rate of change it's really just a slope calculation Flipping over to the second page, we're going to graph the, uh, and these are the three graphs on the first page, we're going to graph uh, y equals uh, a half to the x, one third to the x, and a quarter to the x. And so the difference between the first page and this one is all the bases are rational numbers between 0 and 1, or fractions between 0 and 1. And so, for the first one here, when we uh, evaluate a half raised to the power of negative 3, that's what this says. Now, remember the negative exponent means the reciprocal. So this is actually equivalent to the reciprocal of a half, which is 2 over 1, raised to the power of positive 3. So this is really just 2 cubed, which would equal 8. So that first y value would be 8. Uh, if we raise a half to the power of negative 2, that would be the same as 2 squared, or 4. Uh, to the power of negative 1, we would get 2. And then a half raised to the power of 0 would be 1, same as all the ones on the last page. A half raised to the power of 1, of course, would be a half. A half squared means a half times a half, or a quarter. And the last one is an eighth. And so if we plot all these points, negative 3, 8, so left 3 and up to 8. Uh, negative 2, 4 would be right here. Negative 1, 2 would be right there. Uh, 0, 1. One half, one one half would be here. Two a quarter would be down here, and then there's three one eighth. And so, if we draw a smooth curve between those, that's what the uh, y equals a half to the power of x curve looks like. And very similar, you can graph the rest of these. And I'm just going to go kind of quickly through these. You can investigate the y values if you want. And so, if we plot all the points draw a smooth curve. That's what y equals a third of the power of x looks like. And then the uh, a quarter, these are the y values. And so if we plot them, that's what y equals a quarter of the x looks like. Now we're going to compare these on the next page a fair bit, so I'm not going to uh, spend too much time here. But notice that the half the power of x and 2 of the x, they're actually reflections of each other in the y-axis. Same as y equals 3 of the x and y equals 1 third of the x, those two orange graphs are reflections of each other in the y-axis. And the same for the 4 of the x and a quarter of the x. So comparing the graphs, now one thing I'd like you to note is that all these functions have a horizontal asymptote. In this case, it's y equals 0. If you start getting into any uh, transformations, like for a vertical shift, for example, then it wouldn't necessarily be y equals 0. It might be y equals some other constant. But they all, all exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote somewhere.
Now, these functions here that have a base between 0 and 1, they're completely decreasing functions. And remember, to figure out if something is increasing or decreasing, you look at the graph as you go from the left side to the right side. So these are all going down from left to right, so they're decreasing functions. The first three that we graphed, you go from left to right, the bases between um, is bigger than 1. Uh, like the 2, 3, and 4. So those are all increasing functions. As you go from left to right, they're going up. So they're increasing if the base is bigger than 1. Now notice that they all go through the y-axis at the same point. So they all have a y-intercept of 1 since a to the power of 0, whatever the base a is, whether it's 3 or 2 or 4 or a half or a quarter, whatever it is, raised to the power of 0 always equals 1. The only exception here is you can't to evaluate 0 to the power of 0. That's why this restriction is listed here. Otherwise, uh, they, they certainly all have a y-intercept of 1. Now, as I mentioned in the last page, y equals a to the x and y equals 1 over a to the x are reflections of each other in the y-axis. All these functions have a domain of the entire set of real numbers. They go forever to the left and forever to the right. And I just kind of said that backwards, forever to the left, forever to the right. Now, they all have a range that is, in, in this case, uh, the y values are completely above zero. Uh, they never actually touch the x-axis because there's no power of three or two or four or a half or whatever that a positive power that, or actually even a negative power, that will give you a, a value of zero or below zero. And so the range is all real numbers such that y is greater than 0. It cannot equal 0 either. No power of a positive, whether it's a whole number like 2 or a fraction like a half, no power could ever make that work out to be 0 or negative. On to the last page, which is where we're going to talk about the inverse of an exponential curve. And so this is actually the graph of uh, y equals 2 to the x, the very first one we graphed on the first page. And here's several of the ordered pairs from that uh, table of values. Now to graph an inverse, one thing you can do is just switch the ordered pairs. So for example, the point 3, 8 would become 8, 3 on the inverse. You just switch x and y. Uh, 2, 4 would become 4, 2. 1, 1, 1, 2 become 2, 1. And so if we take these order pairs, 0, 1 would be uh, 1, 0 right here. And this point, uh, negative 1 half, 1, sorry, negative 1, 1 half would be 1 half, negative 1. So over 1 half, down 1, so that point right there. And then we could plot the, this other one as well. And so we draw a smooth curve between them. And so that's what the inverse of y equals 2 to the x looks like. Now, we switched for all the ordered pairs x and y, so in the equation you do, you do the same thing. So y becomes x and x becomes y. So the uh, inverse equation would be x equals 2 to the power of y. So the inverse of y equals 2 to the x is x equals 2 to the y, and that's what the graph looks like. Now, if the base is greater than 1, as in y equals 2 to the x, notice that the exponential curve y equals 2 to the x and its inverse are both increasing functions. So they increase as you go from left to right, and, and, and this one does as well. It never ever goes actually horizontal. It does keep increasing. Now, if the base is instead between 0 and 1, like the half to the x and the third to the x in the previous pages, then that's an example of that kind of graph here, the red one here. y equals b to the x, where the base is between 0 and 1, looks like this, so it's a, it's a decreasing function. And if we were to graph its uh, inverse, this is what the inverse would look like. This is the x equals b to the power of y. Uh, it's also a decreasing function. So if the base is between 0 and 1, they're both the, both the uh, exponential curve and its inverse are decreasing. If the base is uh, greater than 1, then they're both increasing functions. But that's what the inverse looks like. This dotted line here is the line y equals x. And the reason it's there is because its the inverses are actually reflections across that line. And that's why 3, 8, for example, becomes the point 8, 3 in the inverse. They flip exactly across the, uh, the line y equals x.
So it's kind of like this point's flipped over to here, this point's reflected over to here, this point's reflected over here, etc. They're actually vertically opposite of that dotted line, of course the same distance uh, from the dotted line, one on one side and one on the other. So that's what the inverse of an exponential curve looks like. And that's the end of the lesson.